Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Meshtastic. This one we're going to actually be setting one up, assuming that you were interested on the uh, little tease kind of on the first one there, the trailer, on what's to be expected. Um, so this one here is uh, just a continuation, I guess, out of that one. So we're just going to generically set up one of these T-beams so that it's uh, available to um, other T-beams if you have any in your area or you have more than one uh, which would make it having more than one area. So, uh, first thing you guys got to do is you got to go to, uh, I'm not going to really go through this because it's really easy and it's not necessarily has nothing to do with Meshtastic. It's just a, um, uh, open source program called Python and Python is what you're going to use to talk to, like from your computer, uh, you're going to talk to the T-beam via a, um, USB cord. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, there's apparently there's a USB charging cord and a USB programming co cord cable. I can't tell them apart. The only thing I know is that when you plug it in, you'll get that little chime, like, like that. Uh, other than that, I can't really, I don't know how you know the difference. I, all, all of the ones that I've plugged in made that chime and they've all been able to program this. So, um, you go here, this will run, walk through your computer and how to install, um, the the uh, the Python uh, stuff and um, I'm not a Windows guy I'm a Mac guy so I, I, I figured it out uh, you guys should be um, able to do it too okay all right so now assuming that your computer is set up um, maybe I, I'm, I'm gonna throw a link on this but uh, you just go to uh, it's meshtastic.letstalkthis.com um, and that's going to be the unofficial guide to the open source off-grid GPS mesh communicator, which is known as Meshtastic. Um, you can just do any of your favorite search engines and type in like unofficial Meshtastic and it's going to pop right up. So we're going to go over to the uh, installer because there's a web installer. And the web installer is very easy to use. This is found on the official, official Meshtastic uh, website. And it's how to flash your T-beam. So um, we're going to take our T-beam here. And we're going to plug it in. But before we do that, we want to make sure that there's an antenna on it. Um, otherwise, you're throwing a carrier with no uh, antenna. And these are not very uh, big, bad chips. So they'll probably burn it out. So make sure the antenna is on before you power this thing up. Either by battery, which I don't have in here. There's no battery in here. Or um, by USB port, which we're going to do. Because we're going to be uh, throwing some commands at this thing. So uh, we're going to go ahead and power this up again. And uh, we're going to pretend that... It's, it has a screen on it. We just got it. Maybe we soldered the screen on. Maybe we purchased it with the screen, but it's not flashed for Meshtastic. It's just a blank board. You go to this uh, web installer, and first thing you do is you select which uh, device you have. There's multiple devices that can take Meshtastic and all talk and work together in harmony and sing Goombaya. Um, but ours is, of course, called the T-Beam. So we're going to uh, find T-Beam in this uh, thing here, which is way down here, and T-Beam. And then next we're going to do is select uh, our uh, our actual firmware version. Um, there's a lot of them. These uh, older ones are at the bottom. The newest one is at the top. So we're going to go ahead and uh, select the the, the, high, the you know the newest one. Um, and then we're going to choose here whether we want to update the device. So if you have a T beam that has an older version of Meshtastic in it, which um, you guys didn't see me do this, but I checked one of the older ones so that we get a a uh, message to telling us to upgrade it. Shh, don't tell anyone. We're going to pretend that we didn't know that. So um, we're going to go and, uh, in this case, we're going to wipe and reinstall it from scratch. So uh, everything is going to be defaulted. We're not just upgrading. So, And I'll show you how to upgrade it later on because we're going to have to do an upgrade. All right, so what port is the thing plugged into? It's a Windows machine. It has no idea. You have to tell it. It's the port with the Meshtastic in it. No, 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 no. It's got to know a number. So here we go. It's in COM port 7 and continue. Now what it's going to do is it's going to say install T-Beam, then it's going to go, do you want to erase the device? Are you going to erase everything? Yes, erase everything. Okay, install. So this whole process here takes about two minutes. You can use this time to go get a cup of coffee or grab your mobile device that you're going to use to communicate with Meshtastic and uh, go to your uh, store. In this case, I have an iPhone, so I'm going to go to the App Store. There's a Google Play Store. And we're just going to search for Meshtastic, okay? And uh, you get about the word Mesh in it. It usually pops right up. And you're going to get that little logo like I had in the first screen there. Meshtastic. And we're going to go ahead and 
um, loaded on our phone on our phones or devices now you can also connect this to a uh, USB I'm sorry, yeah, USB uh, to your Wi-Fi in your house and then you're able to access this uh, from like a computer's uh, web browser so um, that is also an option if you're like well I can't well this is how you can do that so um, you can go ahead and open it up it's not going to do anything um, so we're gonna have to give it the permissions you know yes we'll allow it to use Bluetooth we'll allow it to send us notifications uh, when you do any of the stuff with the location, it's going to ask you if you're, you know, going to let your your phone share its location with this device, and you're going to have to allow that too. Uh, so right now, because there's no radio, because we're only at 30, uh, percent it's going to say no device is connected. So uh, right now, this is as far as we can go until our MeshTastic device finishes um, installing the firmware. So uh, we'll be right back. All right, so this thing's just about done here. It says wrapping up. So now what it's going to do is it's going to reboot. So that's what it's currently doing. It's rebooting. So um, what you got to do is you got to hit next, and you got to get complete out of this because otherwise it just ties the port up. And then if you try to do anything through this that port to this device, uh, it kind of jams it up. So um, as soon as this thing is uh, rebooted, we're gonna we're gonna start our uh, start our thing here. So what I'm gonna first tell you is that you're gonna have to set the region because it has no idea what country it's in because it's just been freshly. Um, made into a uh, T-beam so um, it's uh, now ham operators uh, there is something that you guys can do on this that uh, will enable you to do something that only licensed ham operators can do so I assume it has something to do with like freq with the frequency or the power or something but um, you know you guys have uh, additional things that you can do with this than us unwashed masses can do um, but we're going to go with just the generic, license-free, we don't know nothing, we didn't pass no tests, um, setup for one of these. So, if you notice right here, it says Meshtastic 4FD8. 4FD8 is the last four of the uh, MAC address of this device, so that's how it's currently identifying itself. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Meshtastic uh, phone app here, and we see here, we see the Meshtastic 4FD8. Uh, so that is this board. Is the only board so and it makes sense that it would be there so we're gonna connect to it now when we connect to it we just tap on this and then it's gonna ask for the uh, the pairing code now if you don't have a screen on yours and you're unable to get something like this there's no problem when it starts up it's gonna check to see if it vice has a screen on it if it does have a, has a screen on it it will generate a random code if it doesn't have a screen on it the code is one two three four five six okay um, so don't think like, oh, I gotta have a screen. No, you don't. You don't have to have a screen. But so in this case, we're gonna go with, uh, go back into it here, get another code. So uh, our code is uh, 670483, 670483, and we'll pair it. And then um, you're gonna see it's gonna connect, and then this is gonna connect. First thing it's gonna wanna do is set the region, because it doesn't know what country it's in, so it wants to know what what frequencies to broadcast on. So we go into the settings here, which is right down here anyways, and it says select region, okay? Uh, we're in the United States, but if you notice here, uh, United, uh, or you, the European Union has a 433 megahertz one. They also have a 868 megahertz one. There's China, Japan, there's a bunch of different ones, even down here in 2.4 gigs. So if you want to run this on the 2.4 gig band, because uh, your 900 megahertz are crowded or whatever, uh, which I can't imagine why, unless you live next to a nursing home, a bunch of people with a bunch of cordless phones. Uh, just do the United States one. Okay. Uh, so everything else we're going to use, all those presets, we're not going to change anything. You can change something. Um, you can change a lot of this stuff, and we'll kind of go over that. Um, but right now, we're just default, save. It's going to confirm that we want to save the configuration, and then this thing is going to reboot here as soon as we hit save. So let's go to uh, that one, and then you'll see this is going to say rebooting. It's going to reboot, and... Um, We've now put in that we want the uh, United States 900 megahertz license free band uh, radio. And let me show you on this one now what it's going to do. Uh, it's no longer going to look like this where it's available radios. It's going to show that you're connected to it. So now we're currently connected to it. And you see here it says subscribe to mesh. So that means it's currently on the network. It's available on the network. Anybody can go and take a look at your device. <clears throat> now the name. That's horrible, right? 4FD8. Well, are you going to remember everybody's, you know, 
MAC address for their device? Probably not. So we're going to go down here to settings, and then right here where it says user, this is where we're going to change the name. So this one here, um, we're just going to call it uh, Bob's, B-O-B-S, Bob's device. Because that sounds uh, cool. And then for a short name here, we're going to put Bob. Because you can spell it backwards and still be right. All right, save it. Do the configuration. It's going to do the reboot here on the device. And when we go to this here, you're going to see that it's going to uh, change that MeshTastic 484 thing to... Wait for it to load. Here it is. And now we got Bob's device. See that? So we've changed the name now. So now hypothetically, if we had another device here and they went to messages and you went to direct message, you would see Bob's device in here and you would be able to know that that's Bob's device without having to memorize the MAC address number. Sending it to a channel, to a primary channel, this is literally just sending it out there to anybody, um, which we don't have anybody else. If you want to know if there's somebody else on, you can go to nodes and it'll tell you all the nodes that you can see. And in this case, we can't see any other nodes because there isn't any other ones. Not yet. So that's a basic setup. Uh, if you then get another device and do exactly what we did here, that other device will talk to this device on the default network and you can send messages, you can send locations and you can do all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, that's how that goes. Uh, next here, we're gonna get into a couple more advanced uh, things here. So, um, We'll be back with another one very shortly.